Welcome everyone to part 8 of the sci-fi first person shooter tutorial series. In this video, we'll be creating a health bar for our enemy blueprint. We'll be creating a widget blueprint so we can display its health bar on screen. We'll update the health bar to reflect our enemy's current health when they take damage. And we'll only want the widget to be visible when our player character is within a predetermined range from our enemy. This is going to be our first widget blueprint that we're creating in this series, so I'll take a little bit of extra time to explain what we're doing and maybe how to expand it in the future. Now to start off, widget blueprints are currently the main method in Unreal Engine to easily add on-screen graphics. This helps game developers add things like a heads-up display to the screen, or add an on-screen image, or even just display some numbers on screen. Widgets give us a powerful tool to show the player these visuals without being dependent on the 3D world our player inhabits. It's like we're literally plastering things on the screen itself instead of putting them into a 3D level. So let's dive in and start by creating our health bar widget blueprint for our enemy to use. We'll go down to our widgets folder, that way we put it in the correct place. To make a widget blueprint, we'll just want to right click on the content browser, search for user interface, and select widget blueprint. I'm just going to call this our enemy health widget. And we can just double click on it to open it. Now widget blueprints are broken up into two major sections. The designer tab where you can add widget components and overall design the aesthetics and structure of your widget. And the second is the graph tab where all of the functionality and blueprint scripting of the widget will be done. We're going to start in the designer tab and in the palette tab we're just going to search for a pre-created widget called progress bar. Now there's tons of pre-created widgets that are available when you have Unreal Engine installed and there's even a way to get user created ones under the user created tab but we're just going to be using the pre-created progress bar to display our enemy's health. So our goal is to use a progress bar to visually represent our enemy character's health with this widget. So let's add this to our widget by dragging and dropping it into our canvas panel. Now we have an empty progress bar added to our widget blueprint. Newly added components are given a default name, but we can change the name here in the details panel. I'm just going to make it simple by calling it health bar. And let's zoom into our health bar here. Progress bars are really only composed of two pieces. The background image, which we're seeing right now since the health bar is empty, and the fill image, which we can see by increasing the percentage of fill here in the progress section. You may have noticed that the percent fill is controlled by a single float variable. That means 100% fill is going to be 1.0, 0% fill will be 0.0, .0 and anything in between will be that percentage. Now there's a lot of customization that we could do to this progress bar, like changing the background image the gray portion that we see back here, or the fill image, the blue section that we see there. I'm just going to leave the percent at 100% when the widget's created. But I do want to do two things. I think this health bar might be a little too thick, so we're going to change the size Y from 30 to 10. And I don't want the health bar to be blue. I'd rather have the health bar be red, that way the player can more easily identify this as an enemy health bar and not a friendly health bar. So let's change this to a one and zero, zero for green and blue. Now we just have a solid red, 100% filled health bar. And with that, we have a health bar for our enemy constructed, but we haven't added any functionality that gives us the ability to change the fill percentage, this variable here during gameplay. So let's hop over to our event graph and we can add that functionality. I'm just going to delete these events here. In fact, we're going to create our own custom event that we can call from our BP enemy whenever we want to update the fill value of our health bar. Let's give this a nice name like update health. And there's a ton of ways to do this, but we're just going to call this event whenever our enemy takes damage. We're going to update this to whatever their health value is. So to update that, we're going to get our health bar and we're going to get a reference to our percent. So we can set our percent. And since we want it to match our enemy's health, all we have to do is set this as an input and we can transfer over that information when the function is called. And I know it's simple, but that's all the functionality that we're going to need for our health bar. Now we can close this out and go back to our BP enemy. 
we're not going to need either of these two functions so we can delete those and the first thing that we're going to want to do is add a way for our enemy to display a widget physically above their head the easiest way to do that is to add a widget component so we can search for widget and instead of it being called widget i don't want it to be confusing so i'm just going to call it widget component here we're going to want this widget to follow our player mesh around so we can attach it to our player mesh of our enemy character, which honestly, we should change that name. Let's go ahead and go back to our master FPS character. And since our enemy doesn't have a player mesh, since you're not going to be playing as them, let's just call it skeletal mesh. There we go. Just need to compile and save a few different actors here, all of the children. There we go. So we have our widget component and we can attach it to our skeletal mesh of our enemy. Then we want to move it to a reasonable location that it'll be displayed above the head of our enemy. After messing around with a few values, I went with negative 11, 3, 200. And I think that's a good place for the widget to be. With our widget component selected, we can go to the details panel and scroll down to our user interface tab. This is where we'll want to specify which widget this widget component is going to render. So under widget class, we can select the newly created enemy health widget. And we do want to make sure that this is drawn at the desired size. And don't forget to turn start with tick enabled to false since we're not going to need this ticking every frame. And lastly, we have two options as far as the space that the widget component inhabits. We have world space and we have screen space. The easiest way to think of this is do we want the widget to be in the 3D world or do we want it to appear directly on the viewport in screen space? And to show the difference, I'll play test really fast. So let's leave this in world space. And when we play the level, we can see that our enemy does have a widget above them. But if we go to the side, it's physically in 3D space and it'll follow our enemy just like that. We can't see it very well unless the character is looking directly at us. If we switch it to screen space, it'll become much more apparent that this is what we're looking for. Since if we start playing, we can see the enemy's health bar, and it doesn't matter what direction we're facing them at, it's going to render exactly how we want it on screen. So everything's looking great. We'll just want to add a few other features to keep our enemies feeling natural. The first one being updating the health bar whenever our enemy takes damage. And we're going to do something that we did in the last video, overriding a parent function. But in this case, it will be slightly different since we'll be overriding an event from the parent. We start off by doing the same thing. We'll go to override functions and it's going to be event any damage. If you'll remember, this is the event in our master FPS character that checks to see if we're alive and not immortal. If those are true, we'll lower our health, check to see if we're still alive. And if we're not alive, our character will die. Now we still want all of this to happen when our enemy takes damage. So instead of overriding the whole thing, we're gonna right click on the event node and add a call to the parent event. We can plug in all of these inputs and executes so that all of the normal parent damage stuff still happens. We just wanna do a little something extra afterwards and that little something is updating our widget. We don't quite have a reference to our enemy health widget, from our widget component yet. So let's set that up at begin play. To get that reference, we can get our widget component and we'll need to get a reference to whatever widget that this component is currently rendering. And to get that, we can simply just drag off and search for get widget. This gave me an extra copy of the widget component. Don't need that. And we only wanna get a reference to it if it is our enemy health widget. So let's cast to our enemy health widget and we can promote that to a variable. I wanna make the name just a little bit simpler. Let's call it enemy health widget. That's perfect. But let's imagine that our enemy starts off with less than 100% health. We are going to wanna to update the health widget uh, at begin play so we can go ahead and search for the update health function that we created in that widget. And we can just get our current health variable get health and transfer that information over. That way our health bar is set to whatever percent our health is. And just to finish up what we were doing before, we want this same thing to happen whenever we take damage. So let's get a reference to our enemy health widget, plug that right in and call this function every time our character takes damage. That should work right off the bat. Let's minimize here and 
We can shoot our enemy, and now their health is updating, and they die, but one more housekeeping item. Our health bar doesn't disappear when the enemy dies. And we can quickly fix that by doing the same thing, overriding one of our functions. In this case, it's going to be the character death event. We still want all that normal dying stuff to happen, so we're going to add a call to the parent. But after all the normal character death stuff, we're going to want to get our enemy health widget and set its visibility to hidden. In fact, what we might want to do is check to see if the health widget is still valid. Whenever we get near death events or things that might delete the character soon, it's always good to check to see if things are still valid because if they're destroyed, then we'll just get a failure. So after our character dies, we'll do all the normal death functionality, check to see if we still have a health widget, and if we do, we'll set it to hidden. Now we can test this out, and our enemy health widget works like a charm. But I want to go one step further because the health bar currently appears visible no matter what the range is between our player and our enemy. But we can set up a simple system that sets the health bar's visibility to visible when we're in a specified range and sets it to not visible when we're outside of that range. The best way to do this is to start off with our widget component's visibility set to false. And then we'll turn on this visibility whenever our player character gets within the specified range. So we can compile and save, and to get a quick radius to keep track of whether or not the player is within it or not, we can add a sphere collision component. And I'm just gonna call this radius, and we'll attach it directly to our skeletal mesh so that it follows the skeletal mesh around. Let's go to our viewport so that we can see this radius, and let's make it a little bit bigger. It looks like it's pretty low right now. We can set its location a little higher. In fact, I'm going to bring it up maybe to waist height. So this radius is going to keep track of whether or not the player is inside of it. Don't forget to set start with tick enabled to false. And let's change the sphere radius to something like 800. That way we have a large radius to keep track of. If we scroll down in the details panel, we can see our events here. The ones we're going to need are on component begin overlap and on component end overlap. So let's add on component begin overlap, right click, add another event here on component end overlap. And like we've been saying, we really only want on component begin overlap to check to see if the other actor is our player character. If it is, we'll set the visibility of this component back to true. So we'll set this to true. And if our player is leaving our radius, we'll set the visibility of our widget component back to false. So to check to see if the other actor is our player character, we can simply cast to our BP player character. And off of the successful path, we can just get our widget component, set visibility to true. Right off the bat, we should be able to see that in action. The health bar is invisible. Let's go ahead and get within range, and it appears visible. Now we just need a way to turn it back invisible whenever we get outside of that range. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to promote the player actor to a variable. We can plug that right in. And let's rename this just to player character. And off of the end overlap, let's just see if the other actor is the same as our player character variable that we set up here whenever they entered the radius. And instead of a cast, we can do a branch here. If the player left the radius, we can set the visibility of our widget component to false. Let's go ahead and minimize, and we're within range, and we're out of range. In range, out of range. And it looks like that's working right off the bat. But every time we enter the range, we are casting. So I'm going to do the same thing that we did in the last video. I'm going to do that little trick just to save a little bit on resources. It's not a huge save here since this isn't firing every frame, but it does make it a little bit more efficient. We're just gonna search to see if our player character variable is valid. If it's not valid, we're gonna cast to our BP player character from the other actor. And if our player character is valid, we're actually gonna do the same thing that we're doing over here. We're gonna go into a branch, and we're gonna to check to see if the other actor is our player character. Off of the true path, we're gonna go ahead and set that visibility. So this is a little bit more messy and unnecessary and more complicated than the one that we did last time. 
but it'll still save on resources. Basically, whenever something enters the range of our radius, it's going to check to see if our player character variable is valid. If it's not valid, it's going to cast that other actor that entered the radius to see if it's our player character. If it is, it'll set our player character variable, and now it'll know the specific actor that our player character is and set that visibility for the widget component. Next time it fires, if something else enters the radius, check to see if the player character is valid. If it is valid, check to see if the thing entering the radius is the player character. And if it is the player character, set that visibility to true. So once again, a little bit more complicated, but not too bad. I'm just going to collapse this down into a macro. And the macro is pretty messy. Let's go ahead and make this a little more neat and readable. We're not going to need two of the same inputs, so let's delete that. Player character. We can make this a little tighter, a little neater. Trying to avoid all the spaghetti that I can. And there we go. So we can delete that by holding Alt and clicking on that second B there. So when our macro fires, once again, going to check to see if our player character is valid. Do that branch, check to see if the other actor is equal to our player character. If it is, execute the next function here by setting that visibility. There we go. Now we can rename this to player cast, compile and save, and we have a pretty efficient resource here. I'm just going to leave a quick comment box around this so that we know everything involved is updating the health widget visibility. And we can compile and save. So as we already discovered, it is working correctly whenever we enter and exit the radius. The visibility updates appropriately, and same for the other ones as well. Enter and exit the radius. If you want to play around with this radius a little bit more easily, what we can do is go to the construction script, and we can have our radius, and we can set the sphere radius in the construction script. I'm just going to set it to 800 and promote that to a variable so that our default is 800. We can compile and save that, but click this little eyeball. That way our in-sphere radius has instance editable set. And for each of our enemies, now in the details panel, we should be able to see our in-sphere radius in the details panel. So we can change it, increase it, lower it. This should help with playtesting a little bit. Maybe 800 is a little too large for you and you want the health bar only to appear when they get really close to you or you want it to appear basically at all times so you make it really huge. For me, 800 is going to work. I'm just going to leave it there, but you can use this to fine tune your radius if that helps you out. But that leaves us in a great place to end the video, take a little bit of a break. Thank you for following along and hopefully learning something. In the next video, we'll be adding the ability to sprint to our master FPS character, and we'll just be doing a little bit of cleanup to our project as well. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, all that YouTube support stuff. It really helps out against the algorithm. I really appreciate you for watching as well. I'm Joe Von D, here to help you think like a game developer. Stay tuned for the next video in the first-person shooter tutorial series.